the day, Heather Fox. Heather is an illustrator and a graphic designer. She's the illustrator of Llama Destroys the World, Don't Feed the Coos, Llama and the Apoc Unleashes the Apocalypse. Her art is filled with large quantities of quirk and dashes of whimsy, and she's very passionate about illustrating children's books and traveling the world. Heather, take it away. Awesome. Thanks for that intro, Katie. As you could have gathered by now, my name is Heather Fox, and I am an illustrator. Some of the books that I have done include this one right here, Llama Destroys the World, and the sequel to that one that just came out a few months ago, Llama Unleashes the Alpacalypse. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do some of the art that I have created in these books in just a minute, but I just want to show you the other book that was mentioned, Don't Feed the Coos. And all of these have been written by Jonathan Stutzman, who is my husband, and we love to create picture books together. It's one of our favorite things to do. I might bring him in later to ask him some questions as I do some drawing. But before we get into that, I want to show you guys what I like to draw with. So I like to doodle a lot. And I have this little notebook. Any kind of paper is what you can doodle in, but I'll show you some of my little snippets here. Ooh, you can see a coup. There's one. But one thing that's really good when you're doodling and getting out your ideas is to use something that does not have an eraser. So I use this pencil when I doodle so that, you know, I don't erase anything because when you're trying to doodle, you want to get all your ideas out there and you don't want to have anything that you want to change or erase, anything goes. So that's really good to use. So when we draw today, I'm going to use a marker, which you all know you cannot erase. It's very hard. When I do my final art, so all of the pictures that you see in these books, all of this is the final art that's produced in a book. And when I do that, I actually use something that some of you might have in your homes. I use an iPad. And when I use that, I have this special little pencil that I use. It's called an Apple Pencil. And it's kind of like a stylus, and it lets me draw right on the screen of my iPad. And that's how I do all of the art. That's how I did all of the art in all of these books. All right. Let's draw. I think we're going to start with something that is the main character, Llama, because he's so fun to draw and he's really easy to draw. He might not look that way, but I will show you guys a really, really easy way to draw Llama. So a lot of my illustrations are based on shapes and they can be broken down into shapes that you guys all know how to draw. So we're gonna go through that together. All right, you guys ready? Let's do this. So when we start drawing llama, we start drawing with the eyes. And llama has two really big, really round eyes. So here we go. We're gonna draw a big circle, just like that. And right beside it, we're gonna do another big circle. And in those circles, we're gonna draw another circle. So I'm gonna draw this llama looking out at all of you guys. So we're gonna draw a circle, and then we're gonna fill it in. And then we're gonna do the same thing in the other circle. And fill it in. Eyeballs. Awesome. And guess what? We're gonna draw another circle. So Llama has a muzzle where his nose and mouth are, and those are all contained within another circle. All right. Ready for the next part. It's pretty easy. Letters of the alphabet. Letter Y. Capital letter. We can use some other letters too. But his nose is just a capital letter Y. And his mouth can be any kind of mouth you want to give him, but I always like to give him a little smile. So let's give him a little curve. 
All right. Now, we're going to use another kind of letter, an upside down letter U. So when we do the ears, that's going to be our U shape. We're going to start, I'll show you right here, the top middle of the eyeballs. And that's where we're going to start our U shape. So, ready? Upside down U. Upside down U. Done. And in those little shapes, I just like to draw a little line for his little ear holes. And then, this is the hardest part of the entire drawing. You guys have to watch really, really close. All right, are you watching? Are you watching? Ready? Done. Just draw any kind of squiggle you want to. Because Llama has some pretty crazy hair. I'm going to adjust it here. All right. And, you know, remember when we started the, the ears, we started at the top middle of the eyes. So when we draw the neck of Llama, we are going to start at the bottom middle of the eyes, right there. All right. And this is just going to be a simple line with little, little bumps in it. Because Llama has fur. And we want to show that he's a furry guy, just like that. And you can give him one or two or three or four, however hairy you want to make him. And the way that I like to draw fur, you might notice in some of my characters that I draw, is I do these little accents with these little lines to show that he has hair. And that is how you draw a llama. And you might notice there are some similarities between the way llama looks. You see the two really big eyes? Yeah, it's pretty good. And then we have alpaca, which looks pretty similar to llama, but if you look closely, there are some differences. So now you know how to draw llama, and I bet you can figure out how to draw alpaca. Alpaca has a little bit smaller pupils and some curly fur instead of the straight lines. All right. Now I think I'm gonna see if Jonathan was paying attention and can draw llama. Do you think he can do it? You should come say hi, Jonathan. Hello. Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan, and I am the writer of these books. Uh, Heather does all the art, as you can see. She's a really talented artist. But sometimes I like to doodle too, because I just love drawing. Um, so do you think you can help me draw a llama, Heather? Yeah, I'm gonna pass my, my torch Ooh, onto you. Thank you. So, so I'm I sure there's people watching who might wanna see it again. Yeah, because that's, that's the great thing about the books that we like is that we can draw the characters that we, we see in those books and we can take them on our own adventures. Yeah. Yeah. So, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. What did I start with? I think you started with the eyes. I did. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and you said, what shape were they again? Circles. Okay, circles. Yeah. So, two circles. Yeah. All right. And Llama has pretty big eyes, so I'll draw them too. Llama has really big eyes. What about that? That's pretty good. Yeah, I think you passed the circle test. Circles are pretty hard to draw. I don't think anyone can draw a perfect circle, but... They are circly. <laughs> those are good. Okay. And Llama has two pupils. And they were the smaller circles. Ooh. Or is that too small? Well... I'll do it a little bigger. I was gonna say, if you drew small ones, that's more looking like alpaca, but that's all right. That looks really good. Are you gonna do anything different with your llama? Ooh, yeah, I might do a different kind of mouth. Yeah? Is that okay? You can do whatever you want. Awesome. And do you remember what's next? I don't. What's next? The muzzle. Ooh, another circle. Another circle. Yes. There's lots of circles in llama. So that's down here. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Is that good? That's, okay. That'll work. Do you remember what letter of the alphabet we did for the nose? I think it was a J for Jonathan. <laughs> it was not a J. Oh, it was not a J. Okay. It was, it was a, a Y. Y. There you go. Yes. Okay. And you said you're going to give yours a different kind of mouth, right? Yes. I think. Go for it. Actually, I might do the smile, and then I think he's hungry. So I'm going to add a little, a tongue. That looks awesome. <laughs> I'm a little bit hungry right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ears. All right. Ears. You got that? I yep. feel like I the ears is, uh, is a little bit tricky. The U? Oh, no. I made it a little too small. It's okay. Every llama is different. Yeah. It's okay if you make a mistake. Yeah. Even if you're doing it in permanent marker. Yeah. Because we're doing it because it's fun. Are you going to give your llama different hair? Ooh, um, I really want to do the squiggle. Is it okay if I do the you squiggle? You can do a squiggle, okay. yeah. But I know sometimes people like to give their llamas mohawks. I've seen braids, ponytails, anything goes. Well, that looks fantastic. I gave him some bad head. Yeah, mama yeah. didn't do his hair today. No. Okay, and now finish, finish it off. So you start kind of where that one started, but at the bottom of the eye? Yeah. And the little poofs little on the poofs. sides. Yep. I made them he gave really his lots of poofs. Yeah. Maybe he just got out of the shower and he, he rubbed <laughs> his, his fur all over with a towel and now he's like, Poof. yeah. That would probably happen. Yeah. That's what I'm envisioning for him. All right. And I do the same thing on this side. Yep. Okay. He's a really fluffy llama. There we have it. And it's a little long. So. Yep. Did I do it? You did it. Yes. I think it looks pretty, pretty close. It's a little goofy looking. But it's okay. Llama's a goofy guy, so yeah. he can take on many different forms. Well, thank you for letting me try to draw. <gasps> yeah, you did. did that you? was so fun. Awesome. Thanks. I will get the, the marker over to you. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. All right. And I think I have enough time for just one more thing quick. You can draw along with me if you want, or you can say goodbye. But one thing that is very important in Llama to Source the World and in the Alpacalypse is food, specifically cake. So you guys can draw cake really easy. I also break this down into shapes. So here we go. We're going to do a rectangle just like that and then on top of that rectangle we're going to do a triangle sort of like a is that a obtuse triangle an acute triangle i'm not sure but here is the top part of the cake and then we're going to do the icing on the cake so what i do is these little decorative icing bits and you can even go all the way down carry that there and to jazz this up a little bit, we're going to add a squiggly line right in the middle. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom, just like that. So now it has really yummy filling in the cake. And then, do you remember how we did fur for llama? We did those little lines. Well, those don't just work for fur. They work just for texture in general. So what I like to do is add them here which sort of look like little sprinkles or just texture in the icing. All right, so now we know how to draw a cake, but there's another kind of cake in Lama Destroys the World, and that is a cupcake. So, cupcake, let's do that one. We're gonna start with a shape that's sort of like a trapezoid, upside down, but without the line there. So this is going to be the bottom of the cupcake. And now we're going to do the little icing swirls. So let's start at the, the top middle right there. And going down, we're going to do a little one lump, two lump, three lump. You got that? Let's try it again on the other side. One lump, two lump, three lump. 
And then to connect this, we're gonna do a little bit of a wavy line, like so. Add another wavy line to show that icing goodness. And to finish this off, we're gonna add some ridges on the cupcake. And there we go. We have lots of tasty cake for our llamas to feast on. They're probably pretty hungry. At least Jonathan's looked pretty hungry. Well, I think I am almost out of time, but I wanted to thank you guys for joining me today and doing some doodles. And I can't wait to see if you draw llamas and what kind of llamas that you make them because there's so many different things you can do with characters and different variations you can have with them. So happy doodling and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you, Heather, and thank you, Jonathan, for making a guest appearance at our streaming schoolhouse. Um, next up, our second guest teacher of the day is Jason Tharp. Jason has dreamed of being an author and creating wacky worlds with fun characters since he was a kid. Now as a grown-up kid, Jason is driven to help others embrace the magic of their story. He, his works include It's Okay to Be a Unicorn and the forthcoming It's Okay to Smell Good. Jason, take it away. How's everybody doing today? I'm gonna to share a screen with you here. Let me give two seconds here to share this one here and then start this off and let's play that. All right, so as it was mentioned, I am the author illustrator of a book called It's Okay to Be a Unicorn. And I have my whole life dreamed about being an author. Um, when I was six, I used to cover the TV screen with paper and trace the Saturday morning cartoons uh, to teach myself how to draw and I, I wanted to be a storyteller. The problem was when I was little, I didn't grow up in a place that a lot of people really um, thought I could do it. And you know, I wasn't encouraged that much, but I realized at a young age that I wanted to do two things. I wanted to grow up and become a professional baseball player and make cartoons. Then after art school, I went into a corporate world where I started designing at places like a place called Bath and Body Works where I designed all kinds of bottles and stuff. And it was fun and I left there and went to a place called Limited Two where I drew a bazillion different monkeys and unicorns and all that good stuff. And, uh, but I was chasing money and I, I really forgot what it was like to dream like I was when I was your age, what it was like to um, want to do something bigger. So I pretended as an adult because I had this massive OMG moment, I asked myself a question. I said, what would happen if I started to chase my big crazy dreams? So if you could imagine me like, being a parent at 40 years old saying, you know what, I'm gonna start acting like I'm six again. And I'm gonna start asking better questions. And I'm gonna start to chase these big crazy dreams. And some really cool stuff started happening. I've gotten to do lots of kind of, lots of books. I've gotten to write lots of books, illustrate lots of books. It's Okay to Be a Unicorn um, is a really fun book that really encompasses a lot of what it was like for me as a kid trying to chase a crazy, crazy dream. And a new book that's coming out, uh, It's Okay to Smell Good, is all about liking something different when you're in a place where everybody else kind of tells you that there's one way of doing it. Um, but the thing is about chasing big crazy dreams is everybody thinks you got to do it from big places and that's not true. Um, everything I do is right from this office right here. Um, if you see the thing on the desk that's called a Cintiq and a lot like Heather was talking about, um, it's kind of like an iPad. Uh, it's hooked into my computer that's underneath that desk there and I have a special pen that I can, it's called a stylus that I can draw straight on the computer. Um, and then on the right side, that little desk that you see there is uh, what I'm setting my stuff on right now talking to you. Um, and I record all kinds of YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, those are all things that you don't really, you know, you don't have to have all this big stuff. That's my cat, Zoe. She doesn't do anything. She lays there just like that. Um, but there's one thing I want to show with you guys real quick before we draw Cornelius is that everybody can be a unicorn. Now it might seem kind of weird to say that, but it's true. And it's really simple. You just have to remember one word. It's cup, K-U-P. The kind that you think from, not the kind you drink from, right? I'm talking about your brain is what I'm talking about. And one of the K stands for is kindness for myself and others. Now there's a big part in there I want you to pay attention to. It's called for myself. It's for myself for a reason because a lot of times we forget to do that. And the problem is, is we have feels, right? We have some feels that feel good, some feels that feel bad. It's completely normal to feel both of them. There's nothing wrong with you if you ever feel good one time and bad the next time. It's completely normal because the truth is that some days are good and some days are bad. 
if you get stuck in a lot of bad days, I suggest you find somebody to talk to about it and don't get really hung up on it and think that there's something wrong with you because you're having a bad day. Um, everybody has bad days. I have bad days. Um, and it's just part of life. But there is this thing called a unicorn effect that I could talk to you guys about. That some days when you're having a really bad day and you see somebody that smiles and says hi to you, you'll notice that how much better you feel when somebody just sees you. Um, sometimes we can go through life and feel kind of invisible, like people don't see us. And no matter how hard we try, we get stuck thinking that there's something wrong with me. And if you look for the unicorns, or better yet, if you become a unicorn, or if you're having a really great day, you look at other people and smile, you get to sprinkle a little magic on other people's day. U stands for that you're unique. Now, one of my favorite fruits is Brussels sprouts. I know, barf, it's disgusting, but I love them. Um, and there's not a lot of us, but that doesn't make me a bad person, right? Any more than it makes you a bad person for liking something different than me. Because the truth is, is there's going to be friends of yours that like things you like, and there's gonna be things that you like that your friends don't like. That's what makes the world pretty cool. Don't get hung up on if you are unique is different than everybody else and people wanna pick on you for what it, you know, your different things and all that stuff like that. That's what makes you pretty special. And I would run towards all those unique things because the truth is, is that you are the author of your story. You get to write the story that you want to write because here's one thing that I can prove to you all that you are unicorns is the day you were born, you were limited edition, one of a kind, there will never be another one of you and you get to write that story. That's magic. Those are the things that you get to grow up and be anything that you want to be. If you work hard, you treat other people right, and you're just amazing. You don't have to change for everybody else because you're amazing just the way you are. The last is practice. Now, here's the thing chasing dreams, it's not easy. Nobody's going to walk up to you and give it to you ever. Nobody's going to walk up and say, Oh, you look like a kid that needs this dream. Here you go. What you're going to need to make sure you do is you make sure you practice a lot and make sure during that practice that you are able to. Um, you know, just keep doing, keep showing up. Half the battle is just showing up every day, even on the days you want. And it's really important to just always try your best. Um, regardless of what you think is your best, just try your best. If other people don't think that your best is good enough, be like, you know what, that's cool. I tried my best. I know I tried my best. And if you know that you tried your best, that's really all that you really need to know. So just a quick recap, the magic stuff. It's cup, kindness, uniqueness, and practice it. It's really important to be nice to yourself, understand that you are unique, and that's pretty darn cool. And that if you practice every day, things start happening. Chasing your goals is gonna take time, but you know what? If you start each day showing up in practice, you will get there, I promise. I'm proof of that. And the last thing is it's okay to be different than everybody else. I used to spend a lot of time thinking there was something wrong with me because I was different. But you know, it turns out it's kind of cool. And uh, a lot of people, when you grow up and you start doing that thing you want to do, are like, man, I wish I was doing that thing that I wish that you, you're doing right now. And that's pretty cool. So that's that book there. And I'm going to escape out of this real quick. And I'm going to switch. And you guys want to draw something with me? So I'm going to switch over to another camera. Um, and you know what? I totally forgot to start my my timer. So if anybody can uh, that's listening to this, I will pay attention to my little chat. If you can give me a little timer thing, that would be killer. Um, and I'm going to switch over to this. And I got to tell you, like Heather and Jonathan did such an awesome job of teaching how to draw llama. Um, I drew llama and I had him holding the cake and stuff. And it was really fun. And it, what's really cool about this, uh, what Heather was talking about is how you can create so many things based off of simple shapes. And I think that is one of the really cool things about this. So we're gonna continue that exact same thing with simple shapes um, with we, when we go to create Cornelius. Now, Cornelius looks like this, okay? He's this guy right here. Now here's one big thing before we get started drawing this. You guys aren't gonna draw like me. That's cool, I don't want you to. I want you to draw like you, okay? I, don't want to, I wanna wake you up a little bit here. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to stretch your fingers out. Let's get ready to grow here. And how I like to do warm up doodles is I call them scribble doodles, all right? I want you guys to do the same thing with me. I want you to just do a scribble. I don't care what it looks like, just scribble. That's it, leave it open. And how you wanna do is I want you to wake up your creativity and how we're gonna do this is we're gonna do something that might seem kind of hard, but I promise you, if you try it, you're gonna find out that it's not that bad. I want you to look at this for not what it is, but what, for what it could be. And just make something out of it. There's not a rule to it at all. 
it doesn't even have to be good. It can just be anything that you want. But what we're doing is we're going to start to wake up our brain to just start making something creative and get us to see that like, you know what, like, instead of it just being a scribble, we can turn it into whatever this thing is, right? And whatever your thing turned out to be. Um, this is just something really simple to get your brain woke up to make some artwork. Now, you can keep that if you want. You can color it later if you want, or you can just turn it into a paper airplane. Totally up to you. But as we draw Cornelius, like I said, you're gonna draw it different than me, and that's great. What I'm gonna do is just show you some tricks that go through that. If you get frustrated, it's okay. I get frustrated when I draw too. It's not the end of the world. Just kind of pick up wherever you feel comfortable back in it and we'll get going. So with your page up and down, we're gonna draw an upside down V or it's also like an A minus the little bridge. I don't know what they call that little bridge, but I call it a little bridge. Um, and where you stopped on both those lines, what you're gonna do is you're going to draw a little half circle. And on that half circle, I want you to just so three lines on there. Let's turn it into a carrot, okay? Now on the carrot, what we're going to do is the front side of this carrot, we are going to make a sideways U, C, whatever shape you'd like to call that for yourself. And we're gonna stop uh, anywhere. You know, it's not really any sort of particular thing. And in the back side, we're gonna draw an upside down candy cane, or I'm actually not an upside down, we're gonna draw a candy cane. <laughs> And we're gonna put that candy cane on this back side. Now, what you're gonna do, ears, super simple. We all know what a capital D looks like, right? And if you don't, check this out. The capital D is just a straight line and it's just a half circle, right? That's a capital D. Now, on the other side of the horn, you're gonna do a backwards capital D. Super simple, right? And we're gonna draw where this line stopped. Why don't you just draw a big shape like this? This is like his mouth opening up. You can extend it down a little more if you want. And really easy. It is just a straight line down. All right. Now, for eyeballs, all they are two zeros. We're going to put two zeros right next to each other, just like this. And inside of that, we're going to put two filled in zeros, just like that. All right. Now, for the nostrils, he's had these big like horse nostrils. I want you to imagine if you had an Easter egg that you cut in half and you put one half next to each other. So you're gonna go upside down you with the line, upside down you with the line, and you're gonna fill those in. So he has those big gigantic like horse nostrils going on. Now here's where I want you to have some fun with this. I want you to make some teeth. I don't care what kind of teeth. I don't care how many teeth you make. You can do one or a hundred or you can do vampire teeth or dragon teeth or whatever. If you want to draw just like the book, all it is is a straight line down with a line back through. And I'm just going to put some vertical lines. So if you want to put some more teeth on there, feel free. Have fun with it. Um, one of the things we do as illustrators to make a character look like it has a little bit more life to it would be to um, put the inside of the mouth on here. Now, the inside of the mouth is just going to be a line down like this. And then you're gonna put a little bump like this inside there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna color in everything but that little bump, okay? Now that little bump there leaves that space right there, which looks like a tongue, right? Like you can reach in there and you can grab a tongue on there. That is pretty cool, right? Now for the hair, the same thing like Heather was talking about, I want you to put any kind of hair that you would like to put on Cornelius. The one in the book, is he just has these bumps just like this but you put any kind of hair that you want. I have seen rocket chips, I've seen laser beams, I've seen, you know, crazy stuff, ponytails. I've seen like one hair, like literally one hair on there. Uh, and you can do whatever you would like with that. Uh, he does need some eyebrows. The eyebrows are hanging out right up top here. You can do those in any way that you would like. And then there's two things left. The first thing is you got to sprinkle a little unicorn magic. What that is, is an X within the line down. They're also snowflakes. If you're, if you're uh, into the whole snowflake thing, uh, snowflakes there. And then the last thing that you need to do is you need to sign your name on it. Your name, not my name. That way everybody knows who does that. 
So one of the things to wrap it up with you here, um, what you can do with this picture that makes this special is that you can color this in. You can give it to your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, neighbor, mailman, whoever, and it's a great way to sprinkle a little magic on somebody's day. Write something on there nice to them, give it to them, make their day pretty amazing just by being you. You don't have to change anything other than just make some art, give it to somebody. People love that stuff, especially moms. Moms love those things. All right, guys, I hope that you had a good time. Uh, Drawing Cornelius, love for you to check out the book. Would love to hear what you guys think about it. Um, and can't wait for you to check out It's Okay to Smell Good. So have a wonderful day, guys. I will see you guys around. Bye-bye. All right, that was so fun. Thank you, Jason. Heather, if you want to turn your camera back on and Jason, you can keep yours on. We're going to move into the Q&A portion of our session. So again, guys, if you're a young reader who has a question for one of our illustrators, you can go ahead and put that in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you need an adult to help you uh, type out your question, now would be a great time to ask for some help. If you're a young reader who's going to send in a question to one of our illustrators, our guest teachers, if you could put your name and your age so that we can make sure that we are prioritizing your questions to the top of our list, that would be great. While everyone is gathering their thoughts about what they might want to ask you guys, we are gonna start with a question that was sent in from a reader in advance. And that is, what do you do when you have a great idea, but you're stuck on what actually to draw? Mm. Do you wanna answer that one first? Yeah, anyone can go sure. first, just jump so, right in. Um, for me, what I do is I just start drawing stuff I already know how to draw. Um, and a lot of times what I'll do is start borrowing from characters that I have. Um, you know, a lot of times when I was little, when I was a kid, I would borrow like Fred Flintstone's face with Bugs Bunny's eyes and try to smash things together. Um, that's a great way to do it. And mostly it's just draw. Like eventually something works and, uh, and sometimes it doesn't. And that's fine too. Sometimes you just got to go like, you know what? It ain't happening today. I'm good. Yeah, I think for me, it's, it can be really frustrating when you have, you can picture what you want something to look like and you just like, you can't get it to look how you want it. So in my case, what I like to do is I just like to draw a lot of the same thing over and over. So I have all like a bunch of coups. I've drawn so many pigeons and you know, they don't look like this in the book, but they started like that and they developed and eventually they got to the place where I was happy with them. So that's just kind of thing that I like to do is I just like to draw things repetitively over and over. Both excellent answers. Our next question is from Elle, they're age nine and would like to know, what is your favorite book to read? That's a good question. I think for me, I really enjoy reading the Harry Potter series, specifically the fifth book. That's my favorite one. But out of children's books, I really like looking at um, cars and trucks and things that go. That was something that really inspired me when I created Llama Unleashes the Apocalypse. I like really visual books with lots of different characters and fun stuff going on. So that was one of my favorite books while I was making my latest book. Yeah, my favorite uh, children's book would have been The Giving Tree. Um, I love that. And Where the Sidewalk Ends. I used to spend hours reading those and trying to redraw those cartoons in different ways that I, you know, thought of them. All right. Molly, who is nine, would like to know, what is your favorite thing to draw? And how did you get so creative? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I personally like to draw monsters. Uh, I just, I, I think they're cool because they can be anything. Um, and, uh, you know, how did I get so creative? Um, practice. Uh, a lot of it was just believing I could do it. Uh, you know, being afraid of when I was a kid of like uh, thinking I couldn't do it never was really a thing because I just knew that I wanted to do it so much that I would just practice so much. Um, and it goes with anything. If you want to be a skateboarder. Find somebody else doing what you're doing, copy them. You'll learn how to do it. That's how you be creative. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> My mom <laughs> blanked out. That's all right. Uh, so I, Molly, who is 10, 
she wanted to know what your favorite thing to draw was and how you got so creative. Okay, so I got stuck down this wormhole. (laughs) I really like to draw pigs and chickens and like little farm animals. They're my favorite. I think in another life, I probably would have lived on a farm and raised animals. But um, yeah, I really like drawing pigs a lot. They're just like so fun to draw. They look like potatoes. (laughs) And I love potatoes. All right. So I think that this is probably going to be the last question that we have time for, just looking at the clock that we've got left. So we have a young reader in the audience who would like to know what you're working on next. Ooh, well, for me, I just finished something that's a little bit different than all of the picture books that I've been working on. I just finished a early reader graphic novel series that I'm working on with Jonathan, and it's it's pretty fun. It, I had never done a whole big format of, because it's, it's really illustration-based. It's all illustrations, so... That was something different and challenging, and it was really fun, and I cannot wait for it to come out. Uh, oddly enough, the same thing. Uh, I, am, uh, I, I just finished up a reader series and uh, am now starting uh, a graphic uh, reader series as well, so it's the same nice. thing. Nice! Yeah, and I just finished the, uh, the last of It's Okay to Smell Good went out, so um, kind of at you know, that weird spot where I have like a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> it must be nice. You can relax now. I don't know about relax, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. All right. Well, guys, we are running out of time. We've come to the end of our streaming schoolhouse session. Thank you so much for joining us today to be our guest teachers. I'm sure our young readers are rapidly drawing their characters right now as we speak. Um, And thank you for everyone who was in the audience who joined us today. Just a reminder that this was being recorded. So we will be sharing the recordings with everyone who registered. Um, So if you want to share with your friends and um, your colleagues and everyone like that, you'll be able to. And definitely do share your drawings with us um, on the social sites that we shared with you in the chat. Uh, Thank you guys so much for coming and have a great day, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.